Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you've been enjoying the videos recently. If you have been, please uh, do me a favor and subscribe and thumbs up, like any of the videos that you uh, particularly enjoyed. Today's video is gonna be an update on the race that I'm involved with tomorrow. I've been training for it for a long time, about nine months, the Yeovil Half Marathon 2019. This video is mainly gonna be an update on the gear that I'm gonna be using on the day, so running shoes and energy gels, and some information on the taper that I've done this week. Uh, had a very light run early this morning, used the Pegasus 35s. This is my second pair. I uh, really like this colorway, really great. Uh, kind of reminds me of uh, winter, snow, um, sleet and snow, I guess. Um, I picked these up, oh, I got an incredible deal on them in London in October. Got these for £60. You can't lose, really. A great shoe. Uh, Nike really did well with this one. The Pegasus 35, a real winner. If you uh, do get a chance to get some for a great price, do pick them up. Don't hesitate. Uh, do get them. I'll do a full review on the 35s at a later date. What running shoes am I going to be running in for the Yeovil Half Marathon? It's got to be the Nike Zoom Vaporfly 4%. This is the original colorway. Um, I picked these up in December. I was very lucky to get them on the Nike uh, website. I've really enjoyed running these shoes. I'm quite excited about running in them again. I do save them back for races. They're not the type of thing that you just want to take on on sort of easy runs. Um, these have held up pretty well. I'm going to do an in-depth uh, review uh, of these shoes. When I hit 100 miles, uh, it's not going to be long. So please do look out for that. Due to the Yeovil Half Marathon being completely on road, uh, the Nike Zoom Vapor 5 4% is the ideal shoe for it. So uh, yeah, very much looking forward to running in these. I am going to give them a bit of a clean up though before I do run in them. So in terms of fuel for training, um, I've been eating well, um, just making sure that I'm eating sensibly, uh, making sure I'm stocking back up on the calories. But I did invest in a couple of different energy gels and I've been kind of experimenting with those a little bit during training. Uh, one of those energy gels is from this company, Science in Sport. I picked up an incredible deal on these. Um, they were around about £11 for, I think it was 20 of their energy gels. So this is the Go Isotonic Energy Gel. Um, it's in the black currant flavour. It's got a kind of odd taste to it, I've got to admit. Slightly chalky and it's quite a long package if you can see from my, my hand there. It's actually quite a long package. Um, to store in your in your shorts or in your belt or whatever. Um, but I've used these a few times on, on some training runs to give me an extra boost, especially while I was far further away from my house, so I didn't have the opportunity to uh, stock up on anything. I don't really like taking bottles of water out with me. I just prefer not to do that. These have been kind of useful, but again, they're a little bulky, but for the price, uh, uh, I couldn't really uh, pass up that offer. So. Once I've used all these up, I think I might get another flavor and test that out instead, but easy to eat. Kind of a strange, chalky gel flavor. I'm not sure I'm particularly, particularly like the black currant, but hey. So in terms of the race, um, I thought I'd test out the best I can get. I got some of the um, Martin uh, 100 gels. So as you can see guys, the Martin gels are significantly smaller than the science and sport gels. So I think these have got round about the same amount of material in them, but it appears as if the Martin gel has got a hell of a lot more carbs. Uh, there's certainly a lot less in the Martin gel. There's only a few ingredients, um, whereas the science and sport one does have, seem to have quite a lot more ingredients. I've tested both of these gels out on training runs. So I would say that to you guys, if you're gonna, use something uh, during a race, make sure you try it first on some training runs to see how your body copes with that different material that you're putting into it. Um, certainly I found the Martin gel is a lot thicker. It's a lot gloopier. It's almost like if, if you got tried to eat a spoon of uh, like a, a preserve, you know, like jam uh, or like, like, a, like a raspberry conserve or something. It's got a really thick feel to it. Um, I didn't find it difficult to eat. I quite liked the taste of it actually. It was quite a neutral kind of taste um, and it didn't have an aftertaste. It was kind of, once I'd eaten it, it was gone. Uh, whereas certainly the Science and Sport Gel 
it de definitely had more of an aftertaste to it. I wasn't sure if I liked that as much. But both of them seem to work. They seem to work really well. Um, I just know that this uh, Martin gel is going to be a lot easier to store in my um, shorts during the race. That's about all I've got today, guys. I'll do a post-race video tomorrow for you to talk about uh, how the shoes fared um, uh, during the half marathon and also how the nutrition went. If you're enjoying the channel, guys, I'd really appreciate if you'd hit that subscribe button and thumbs up any videos that have been particularly enjoyable to you. If you've got any comments on the uh, running shoes or any of the uh, nutritional stuff that we've looked at today, I'd love to see those. Uh, so please comment down below. I'll catch you soon. Be seeing you.